This is a tutorial on the identification of metamorphic rocks for physical geology. Metamorphic rocks have different textures. The two primary textures are foliated metamorphic texture where the minerals have a parallel alignment. This is usually caused by directed pressure at regional metamorphism at a convergent boundary. But metamorphic rocks can also have a non-foliated or crystalline texture where the minerals grow up against each other if there is no directed pressure or the minerals are not long. The type of metamorphic rock that results from metamorphism depends on the protolith or what minerals are present uh, originally. It also depends on the metamorphic grade and the amount of time that the rock is subjected to the metamorphic conditions. So remember that metamorphic grade refers to the intensity of metamorphism and uh, you can consider a metamorphic rock as being low grade, intermediate grade, or high grade. So low grade metamorphic conditions exist at uh, temperatures um, up to about 400 degrees Celsius if the pressure is low, but only up to about 100 uh, degrees Celsius if the pressure is higher. Intermediate grade rocks can form at temperatures as low as about 200 degrees if, uh, the, temp if the pressure is higher. Um, and the high end of intermediate grade metamorphism can be as high as 800 degrees Celsius, but on, only under low pressure. Uh, if the pressure is high, then intermediate grade stops at about 550 degrees Celsius. Higher grade metamorphism um, extends from about 550 degrees Celsius up to, in some cases, close to 1000 degrees Celsius, but that will depend on the minerals that are present and the amount of pressure the rocks ex um, um, are, are subjected to. Remember that if the temperatures are above about 850 degrees to, uh, to 1100 degrees Celsius, then most minerals will melt and then we have igneous rocks. The minerals that are present in a rock can also help us um, understand uh, the type of metamorphism and the name of the rock. So this is a diagram showing some common metamorphic minerals that are uh, that exist or, or are stable under certain temperature and pressure conditions. For example, chlorite is a green metamorphic mineral that exists only under low temperatures and pressure, so it's a low-grade metamorphic mineral. But a mineral like kyanite, for example, exists under intermediate-grade conditions. So kyanite will form in a rock that's um, under in intermediate grades of metamorphism, but if the temperature continues to increase over longer periods of time, kyanite will turn into sillimanite, which is a polymorph, meaning that it's a mineral with the same elements are, uh, present, but the, the crystalline structure is more compact. Another mineral that forms under metamorphic conditions is garnet. So as you can see in this diagram here, garnet is an intermediate to high grade metamorphic mineral. So it can form in intermediate grade rocks, but as the temperature increases and the pressure increases, garnets um, are still stable, so they just grow larger and larger over time. So next we'll look at a sequence of common foliated metamorphic rocks uh, going from low grade to high grade. So let's assume that our parent rock, or our protolith, is a sedimentary rock made of clay minerals. And this is uh, an example of shale. So this is a sedimentary rock, but it's if it's subjected to burial or pressure, uh, high pressures, then it uh, be starts to become metamorphosed. If it's metamorphosed under low grade conditions or low temperatures, the clay minerals align more strongly and you can get a low grade foliated metamorphic rock such as slate. Slate by definition has a type of foliation that we call slaty cleavage. The minerals are too small to be seen with the naked eye, but you can tell that it's foliated because the rock uh, cleaves into flat sheets. So slate is a foliated rock with slaty cleavage is a type of foliation and it forms under low grade metamorphic conditions. Phyllite is a rock that forms under low to intermediate grade metamorphic conditions. 
The minerals are also typically fairly small, but the clays start to become unstable at these temperatures and turn into other types of minerals, for example, micas, which are very, um, which have one direction of cleavage and they have a high luster and they align parallel to each other. So, so under these conditions, this rock that forms phylate has a sheen to it because of the parallel alignment of slightly larger minerals. It can also start to exhibit, um, it can also still show the slate, slaty cleavage, but some sort of kind of undulations in the uh, flatness can start to develop. Under higher grades of metamorphism, so for example, intermediate to high grade, starting at roughly 600 degrees Celsius, metamorphic minerals can grow larger. So in this case, we have the micas that may, may have existed in the phyllite have uh, become larger in size. And so they're very visible to the naked eye. You can still see on the side of the rock the parallel alignment of the minerals. And you can also see it at the top surface because of the flat surface of the mica minerals. So this is a rock called schist. It's an intermediate high grade metamorphic rock that's foliated. The specific type of foliation is called schistosity, which just refers to the parallel alignment of the large mica crystals that give this very shiny um, appearance to the, to the rock. Schist can also start to develop other minerals that again are very stable under intermediate to high grades of metamorphism. So for example, in this schist, we have some large garnets forming. And garnets are very stable under these conditions, so they do not become um, kind of elongated. They, re they retain their kind of equigranular shape, and they just grow larger and larger under higher grades of metamorphism. So this is another example of schist. Under even higher conditions, uh, higher temperatures, higher pressure, directed stress at convergent boundaries, a high-grade metamorphic rock can form called gneiss. Gneiss is very distinctive, distinctive because it has very obvious uh, banding. So this is the type of foliation where the felsic minerals and the mafic minerals have se segregated and become stretched and aligned parallel to each other. So you get this kind of striped appearance. So it can be white and black banding or kind of pink and black banding depending on the felsic minerals that are present. Aside from foliated metamorphic rocks, uh, there are crystalline rocks. Why would there be a metamorphic rock with no foliation? Well, it depends. If the rock is not subjected to differential stress, so maybe it was just sub subjected to high temperatures uh, near a magma, or if the minerals that form in it are dom dominated by, um, by minerals that are equant, so meaning that they're not long minerals, and therefore they're, they don't have a way of uh, lining up parallel to each other. So we'll look at a couple of examples of crystalline non-foliated rocks. Quartzite is an example of a crystalline metamorphic rock and it's a metamorphic rock that's made of mostly just one mineral, which is quartz. So quartzite can form if you take a quartz-rich protolith, so for example, a sandstone, let's say, that's dominated by quartz, and if it's sub subjected to high temperatures and even high pressures, the quartz can recrystallize and become um, uh, have, you know, form larger crystals that are closer together, so the rock is denser. So this is an example of quartzite, non-foliated rock. Another common non-foliated metamorphic rock is marble. Marble can look very similar to quartz in appearance. Quartz and marble both can be pretty much any color, and they're both crystalline. The difference being is that quartz is made of the mineral quartz, I'm sorry, quartzite is made of the mineral quartz, and marble is made up of the mineral calcite that has been recrystallized. So in this case, the protolith is likely uh, a rock like limestone, which is a sedimentary rock made of calcite, and it can include shell fragments. Heated up near a magma, it can recrystallize and turn into marble. 
So since quartzite and marble are very similar in appearance to each other, and since they are both made of predominantly just one mineral, it may be um, useful to do mineral profit property tests to distinguish between these two rocks. So for example, if we're trying to figure out which one is made of calcite, we might do an acid test. And we can see the effervescence, which indicates that this is likely a rock made of the mineral calcite. And if we try to do it on this rock, there's no reaction, which it indicates that it's not calcite. Remember also that quartz is a hard mineral, and so it should be harder than glass. So it produces a pretty uh, significant uh, scratch in the glass, indicating that it is harder than glass. Whereas calcite is softer than glass, so if we try to do the same thing, it just pulverizes the mineral and does not scratch the glass. So in summary, when we're identifying metamorphic rocks, the first question you want to ask yourself is if the rock is foliated, and if so, we want to describe the foliation and look at the minerals present to determine the name of the rock. If the rock is not foliated, then we would have to likely do um, mineral property tests or other, um, look for other characteristics of the rock to define the non-foliated metamorphic rock.